Hi, this is Sue of the Book by Book blog, and I'm here today with finally a book tag video. I've got a long list of these I've been meaning to do, and I, I my schedule's just been super, super busy, and it's going to get worse for the next few weeks, um, but I thought I could squeeze one in. So this is one I've seen on several different channels that I enjoy, and so I thought I'd jump in and join the fun. This is the Let's Get Outside book tag. And this is right up my alley because I love books and I also love the outdoors. So this one is a perfect fit for me. I first saw it on Gina's channel and I'll link to that down below. And then I saw it again on Novel Opinions, which is a channel I just recently discovered and I am enjoying. So I'll include that down below as well. The Let's Get Outside book tag was originally created by Sandy from Ms. Reads A Lot. So I will include her link down below and you can go find the original tag, but I'll also include all the questions down below. Okay, so let's get started. And the way these are set up, each one refers to a book about the outdoors and then asks a question. So the first one is Into Thin Air. Um, which is a book that I have not read yet, but I want to read. My son had to read it for high school, and um, I loved that his high school literature program combined modern books as well as um, classics and nonfiction as well as fiction. So anyway, my son has read it. My husband's read it. It's here in the house somewhere, but I couldn't put my hands on the copy, um, but I do intend to read it. So Into Thin Air. What is one of your books about or set in the outdoors? So I was calling up a list on my blog um, of the reviews that I've done and the books I've enjoyed. I've got a whole category for nature, so I was looking through that, but then I realized the book I'm, I finished just recently is probably one of my favorite books set in the outdoors. It's a new favorite. And that is This Tender Land by William Kent Kruger. Um, right off the bat, you can see from the cover that it is a beautiful outdoor scene. Um, so this is about four orphans in 1932 who escape from an abusive situation by setting off in a canoe down the river. So the river they're close to feeds into the Minnesota River, which feeds into the Mississippi. And they're starting in Southern Minnesota and their plan is to travel by canoe all the way to St. Louis, where two of the boys have an aunt um, that they barely remember, but they know she's in St. Louis. So that's the overall plot of the book, but this novel just blew me away. Um, I gave it a perfect 10 for my book group because, and the overall, the overall average score in my book group out of 10 was 8.4, which is one of our highest scoring books ever. It is a wonderful novel. It is an adventure novel, but there's so much more to it than that. So much emotional depth. It's also brilliant historical fiction that really gives you an idea of how people were living during the depression. Um, I just loved everything about it. So This Tender Land by William Kent Kruger is a book set almost entirely in the outdoors that I just recently loved. Okay, question two. Winter Dance by Gary Paulson, who is one of my family's favorite authors. Um, this is the true story of Gary Paulson running the Iditarod for the first time, even though he's not very good at it. And the question is, do you have a hobby or skill that you keep attempting even if you are not particularly good at it? So I kind of struggled with this one. I have really had to think about it. Um, I guess I might put photography in this category. Um, I actually think I'm pretty good at photography. Some of my photos have been published along with articles that I've written. I like to write about travel and the outdoors. 
So, um, and some of my article, some of my photos have accompanied my articles in magazines and on websites. So I would say uh, it's not that I'm bad at photography, but I would very much like to get better at it. And one of my goals this year is to take an online course. I took a photography class decades ago when I was living in New Orleans, um, just kind of a basics. And I'd love to have a refresher and learn more about um, photography today, <laughs> digital photography. Okay, question three. This refers to the book Wild by Cheryl Strayed. Um, I loved this book. In fact, this was my initial, without looking anything up, response to the first question about a book set in the outdoors that I liked. Um, it is a memoir about Cheryl's journey, uh, adventure, hiking the um, Pacific Crest Trail, which is a trail that runs from Mexico, I think beyond the Canadian border, um, all the way up the West Coast. She did it very impulsively and very poorly prepared, which as a former backpacker kind of blew my mind and made me a little nervous, <laughs> but it's a wonderful memoir. Um, both the outdoor scenes and the emotional stuff because she does this because she's working through some really difficult things. Um, so that's, that's the book that this question is based on, Wild. This is the story of Cheryl Strayed hiking the PCT after the death of her mother. So recommend another book where the central theme is dealing with grief. So I'm including two because they're very different kinds of books, but I thought both really tackled the issue of grief in different ways. So the first is a memoir called Making Toast by Roger Rosenblatt. So this is a memoir that he wrote after his adult daughter died. And I, she had, she was married and had I think three young children. So what Roger and his wife did after her death was left their home in New England, moved to the DC area, moved in with their son-in-law and their three grandchildren and helped to take care of them during this very, very difficult process. So it's not only about Roger dealing with the grief of his daughter's death, but also about helping his grandchildren to deal with the grief of their mother's death. Outstanding. I listened to it on audio. I believe it was read by the author, which I always find very powerful for a memoir. Um, highly, highly recommended. The other book about grief that I'm recommending I also listen to on audio, but it's a very different kind of book. It is a middle grade book, fiction, called The Remarkable Journey of Coyote Sunrise by Dan Gemenhart. Now, Dan is one of my favorite middle grade authors. Everything he's written has been great. Um, the Honest Truth is another one that I really loved. But Coyote Sunrise quickly became my favorite of his novels. Um, she just stole my heart. So this is a very different book about grief because it's about not dealing with grief. Coyote and her father, Rodeo, he's a bit of a hippie, um, have been living on a school bus, a renovated school bus, and traveling the nation for five years, ever since a tragedy occurred in their family and they don't talk about this tragedy. So for the first part of the book, you don't really even know what happened, which is why I'm not giving away any spoilers. Um, but it has obviously affected Coyote and her father very much, but his approach is, we're not gonna talk about this. We're not going to even mention it. Um, in fact, they haven't been back to their hometown in five years. So at the start of this novel, 
Coyote has her weekly phone call with her grandma and finds out that something's happening in their hometown in a couple of weeks that she doesn't want to miss. So she makes it her mission to somehow convince her father to drive from where they currently are in Florida all the way to Washington State without knowing exactly where they're going. So there's a lot of warmth and humor in this novel, um, as there always is with Dan Gammon Hart. It's, there are lots of fun, quirky characters, but at its heart, it is about grief and about what happens when you don't deal with grief and you know that you do finally have to deal with it. So highly recommend both Making Toast by Roger Rosenblatt, um, a memoir, an adult memoir, and The Remarkable Journey of Coyote Sunrise, which is um, a middle grade novel by Dan Gammon Hart. Okay, question four starts with the book Into the Wild by Chris McCandless. Um, oh, I don't think he's the author. He's the subject of the book and it's nonfiction. Um, Into the Wild, and I haven't read the book yet, but I, I saw the movie, um, so I know a little bit about it. Um, and as Sandy explains here, Into the Wild follows Chris McCandless, who travels to remote Alaska and unfortunately passes away in the wilderness. And the question is, does the idea of living off the grid or away from society appeal to you? So this is an interesting question, I thought. As I said, I love nature. I love being outdoors. I also love solitude, uh, even more so since I became chronically ill 20 years ago. Um, I've always been a very extroverted person, but since becoming chronically ill, I've learned that I really need quiet solitude um, just to maintain, basically. So um, I've become more of an introvert because of that. I love solitude and I need a lot of it. I love spending time out in nature. Um, we just spent a couple of days camping this week, but I do also need people and interaction and social interaction. Um, and even though it wears me out now, I still, I still need that. Um, particularly since chronic illness, I do spend a lot of time alone or just with my husband here in my home um, by necessity. Um, the pandemic was not a huge change for me. I was already spending a lot of time at home, but I rely very heavily on the internet to connect virtually with people, with my, my old friends and my family, with um, new people I've met who share my chronic illness or similar chronic illnesses. And these communities are really, really important to me whether it's sharing photos on Facebook with my friends and family and seeing what they're up to, or connecting with the chronic illness community through my blog and Twitter and um, my Facebook page and YouTube, um, you know, and of course the whole book community. This is a big part of my social life as well. Um, interacting with people online and in person, I belong to several book groups. Um, so I don't think I would want to be completely disconnected from society and completely off the grid. I need my internet connection. Uh, question five relates to A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson. Um, as with many of Bryson's books, this is a memoir. It is the story of when he and his friend Katz hiked the Appalachian Trail. So first, I loved this book. I couldn't find our copy anywhere. We definitely need to organize our books a bit. And as you can see behind me, we need more bookshelf space. Um, but my husband and I both enjoyed this book very, very much. Like, it, like the memoir Wild by Cheryl Strayed, Bill Bryson and his friend Katz 
set off to hike the Appalachian Trail, which runs from Georgia to Maine on the East Coast, with absolutely no preparation. Um, and the stuff they bring with them is just mind-blowing for a backpacker to read about. So the book is hilarious, but as always with Bryson, it's got a lot of depth and heart as well. So loved the book, A Walk in the, Wa in the Woods. Um, I do not recommend the movie with Robert Redford. Uh, it just did not capture what makes the book so special. But anyway, the question is, what is a book with a really interesting friendship? So um, again, I was looking through my book blog and the reviews I've done recently, and I came across one I did last winter of Miss Benson's Beetle by Rachel Joyce. Now, Rachel Joyce is one of my favorite authors, um, kind of a new one in the last couple of years. She wrote The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry, which I loved. Um, another book that deals with the outdoors because Harold walks from one end of England to the other. Um, and she wrote a follow-up to that, uh, The Love Song of Queenie Hennessy, which is about another character in the Harold Fry book. Um, and I loved both of those. So the same book group that read those two chose this one, Miss Benson's Beetle, also by Rachel Joyce. Now, it is about an unlikely and wonderful friendship that develops between two women. Um, it's just after World War II, so like around 1950, I think. And um, the main character is Marjorie, and she has been fascinated her entire life with insects and particularly with beetles. So she has kind of a midlife crisis, quits her job as a home ec teacher, and decides to set off on the expedition of her dreams to this remote island in the South Pacific um, where supposedly is the only place in the world where you can find the golden beetle. And since Marjorie's been a child, she's dreamed of finding this beetle. So she puts an ad out um, through a series of mishaps, ends up taking on this woman named Enid as her assistant for this trip. Now, Marjorie is a tall, sturdy, no-nonsense, practical kind of woman. And Enid is the exact opposite. She's petite. She is fully made up. She wears bright, very feminine clothes. Um, you know, when they first meet each other, Marjorie just really does not like Enid. But they go on this journey across the world together. Coincidentally, much of this book is about nature and the outdoors, so it fits in perfectly for this tag. And they go to this remote island and head off into the wilderness to find this beetle. And over the course of the novel, they develop a very close, very special friendship. So that's my pick for a book about um, a really interesting friendship because they are such opposites. That's Miss Benson's Beetle by Rachel Joyce. Question six. Adrift is the story of Stephen Callahan's Time Lost at Sea. I haven't read this one yet. Do you like the water? Um, I do. I like the water very much. I find just being near water just instantly calming and peaceful. Um, you know, whether it's a lake or the ocean, it doesn't matter. I just, I love being near the water. Um, that camping trip we just took was right on the water. Um, oh, we had a campsite, our favorite site, overlooking the Elk River just before it joins the Chesapeake Bay. I'll show you a quick photo. So I love having that view of the water, being near the water. Um, at night, you could hear the water lapping against the stones on the shore. 
it's just so calming. I love the ocean. Um, I'm not a really strong swimmer. I, I know how to swim, but you know, I'm not a super strong swimmer and I don't really enjoy swimming all that much, probably because I'm not that good at it. Um, oh, I guess I could have said that for something I'm not very good at. <laughs> but um, but I, I love like at the ocean, at the beach, getting in and riding the waves. Um, I love the smell of the water, the feel of it. Um, I've been sailing, my mother and her husband have a sailboat and I enjoy that. And my ultimate dream, both my husband and I, is to have a house right on the water. Our guilty pleasure that we started during the pandemic is watching episodes of Lakefront Bargain Hunt. Now, we don't normally watch any HGTV type shows, but we love this show because it's people looking for a house on the water at a reasonable price. So this has become our dream now. Whether it's on a river or a lake, a bay, the ocean, it doesn't matter. I love being near the water. Okay, question seven, Hatchet by Gary Paulson. As I said, my family loves Gary Paulson. Um, as Sandy explains, this is a fictional story of a young boy who is in a plane crash while traveling to Alaska and has to survive with only a hatchet. So first a bit about that book because it is fabulous. Um, my family, we used to take long road trips when our sons were young and every summer we'd, we'd head out with our camper for three weeks at a time. And one year, we always had audiobooks, of course, but one year, um, one of those audiobooks was Hatchet and my sons went nuts over it. And my husband and I loved it too. That's how we were introduced to Gary Paulson. It's a wonderful story, adventurous, suspenseful, well-written, um, highly recommended for like, there's some danger in it. So older middle grade teen and young adult readers. Um, and it's wonderful on audio. Definitely a great book for a road trip, as I can attest. So that's the book that this question is based on. Sandy asks, what is your favorite survival story? So again, I went back through my blog and looked at some of the books that I've reviewed. Um, and I realized just last year, I reread The Call of the Wild by Jack London. And it's a wonderful survival story. Um, it's really a survival story of a dog rather than a human. But um, most people are probably familiar with the, the story. It's about a dog named Buck. And what he goes through. Um, it's during the Alaskan gold rush and he's stolen from the wonderful family home he lives in and taken up to Alaska to be a sled dog. And it's about Buck's um, everything he goes through and his survival for sure. Uh, I first read it in seventh grade English class, I think. Um, and I had this old copy from way back then and um, just loved rereading it last year. So The Call of the Wild by Jack London. I also wrote down a more modern survival story, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. Now, I know this book has gotten a lot of hype in the last couple of years, but I read it when it was an advanced uh, reader's copy. This was when I was writing reviews for Shelf Awareness. So I both got to review an advanced copy of the book and interview the author. And I loved the book. It was just amazing. Um, as millions of other people can now attest, I can't wait for the movie adaptation to come out this summer. Um, but I also loved talking to the author. She's just fascinating. She's lived a fascinating life. All of her books prior to this one had been nonfiction. So this was a departure for her. But when I did interview her, she said she was working on another novel and I can't wait to read that. And of course, Where the Crawdads Sing is essentially a survival story of a young girl left to fend for herself in the marshes of North Carolina. So highly recommend both of those as survival stories. 
And finally, question eight, a perfect storm is the story of fishermen who were, that were lost at sea during a huge storm. Do you like stormy weather? Um, I can take it or leave it, I guess. Obviously, I don't like the destruction that storms can bring. Um, oh, summer 2020, it was like August here, incredibly hot, and we lost power. We lost power like five times that summer, but at one point in August, when it was like 95 and humid out, we lost power for a full week. Wasn't real fond of that storm. <laughs> um, so I don't like the destruction that they bring. Um, if I'm hunkered down at home, cozy and comfortable, then I don't mind a storm. And of course, I love a snow day with a fire in the fireplace and a good book. And finally, question nine was tag some friends. So I would like to tag Sue's Book Nook, which is a channel I only recently discovered and I am enjoying, and um, Melissa at Fully Booked. Again, a new to me channel, and I think she's fairly new to YouTube as well. So please, I'll include links below. Please go and check out both of those channels. They're great. And of course, if anyone else wants to do this tag, join the fun. I really enjoyed this one. So thank you, Sandy.